So here are a couple of problems relating to the Doppler effect. Uh, the first question says that um, you have a person who is uh, standing and observing an oncoming ambulance okay, at some speed emitting a, um, a steady 800 hertz sound. So let's draw a little ambulance and the ambulance is moving this way and emitting uh, sound waves toward the observer. All right, so the question is, um, what frequency is received by the observer? Right, and then the second question uh, is, um, once the ambulance passes, so once the ambulance drives by, um, now what frequency is observed by the, um, by the listener? Okay, so um, the equation that describes Doppler shift, all right, says that the observed frequency, so f prime, is equal to the um, the emitted frequency, right? The frequency um, emitted by the source times this uh, ratio, this fraction. Uh, so it's v plus or minus v o divided by v plus or minus vs. So let's identify those things. Um, v, the unscripted v is the um, speed of sound. Okay. Um, vo is the observer's velocity. And vs is the source velocity. All right, so in this problem, we are given some of these values. Um, the speed of sound, uh, they were told it's 345 meters per second. Okay, and that can change uh, day to day because it depends on um, the makeup of the air, which uh, is pretty uh, uniform, but it also depends on the temperature, and the temperature definitely changes uh, day to day or hour by hour. Um, the speed of the observer is zero meters per second. He's not moving. And the source is 110 kilometers per hour. Uh, so we can put that in SI units. If you multiply by 1,000, um, that changes to meters, and divide by 3,600, that changes to seconds. Uh, what you get is 30.6 meters per second. Uh, okay, so that identifies the um, velocities. But how do we deal with this plus and minus here? Uh, and the answer is, um, you can kind of use your instincts, all right? Because you know um, when the frequency should be increased and when it should be decreased. Uh, so let's look at this. Uh, we'll decide as, as we go. Uh, so for A, where the um, ambulance is approaching the observer, um, the uh, F naught here is 800 hertz. So 800 hertz times this fraction. Uh, so V, that's 345 meters per second, um, plus or minus the speed of the observer. Well, speed of the observer is zero, so um, we'll just add zero, but it doesn't matter. If you subtract zero, it doesn't change it. Um, in the denominator, we have 345 meters per second. And then we need to add or subtract this 30.6 meters per second. Right. So we can look at this situation and say, um, these wave fronts leaving the, the ambulance are going to uh, be closer together than they should be, right? Closer together than if the ambulance were at rest relative to the observer, all right? So that's going to increase the frequency, right? The uh, observer is going to get these wave fronts more um, often than it would if the, uh, than he, she would if the uh, ambulance were at rest. So this should increase the frequency. So how do I increase something uh, by changing a denominator, well, if I decrease the denominator, I increase the fraction, right? So I'm going to subtract 30.6 meters per second. All right, when I do that math, I end up with 878 hertz. All right, and for the second problem, um, it should be pretty straightforward, uh, 800 hertz. The observer is still not moving, so it's 345 um, plus or minus 
plus zero. And in the denominator, it's 345. Now, the uh, ambulance is moving away, so these uh, wave fronts are actually further apart than they would have been, or they're reaching the observer less frequently. So we should make this frequency smaller, or make the denominator bigger. 30.6. And if you do that math, you end up with 735 hertz. Okay, the second problem here uh, says that we have um, two eagles flying directly toward one another, um, one at 15 meters per second and the other at 20 meters per second. Um, one of the eagles screeches at a particular frequency. Um, what frequency does the second eagle, eagle, um, second eagle receive? Okay, so we can kind of draw this, um, or we can attempt to at least. Um, so this uh, looks like an eagle if you squint a little bit. All right, and this eagle is flying this direction at some speed. Um, and maybe this is the eagle that is uh, uh, emitting some sound. Okay, so this um, speed for this eagle is the speed of the source. Okay, and a second eagle is flying um, the same, uh, well, the other direction toward the first eagle. All right, traveling this direction. This is V of the observer, and um, he's receiving these uh, wave fronts. So we can identify these variables. V for the source, um, we're told the first eagle is screeching, so the first eagle's velocity is 15 meters per second. The observing eagle's velocity is 20 meters per second. And um, the speed of sound on this particular day is 330 meters per second. Okay, so we're just going to plug in our equation. Um, the observed frequency is um, f naught times v plus or minus v naught over v plus or minus v s or v o and v s, sorry. So plugging in here, the frequency um, emitted by the first eagle is 3200 hertz, and then we're going to fill in this fraction. So the speed of sound was 330, so we'll put that in for the unsubscripted V. And then in the numerator, um, we have the observing eagle's velocity. All right, so we should look at this situation and say, should the motion of the observer act to increase or decrease the frequency? Because it could do either one. Uh, and in this case, um, the eagle is flying toward the wave fronts, so um, the eagle is going to receive them more quickly or more frequently than he originally would have, right, if he were sitting still. Right? So this should act to increase the frequency. So we should add 20 in the numerator, right, because that's the observing eagle's uh, uh, velocity. Right? Um, and then in the denominator, we have the... Um, the source eagle. Uh, the source eagle is flying toward the observer, so that again is going to increase the frequency with which um, these wave fronts reach this observer. So I need to increase the um, the observed frequency by changing the denominator, and to do that I actually subtract, right? Because the effects here, um, I need the net effect to be the same by each of these, um, but in the numerator I add and then the denominator I subtract. So if you do this math, you end up with uh, 3,560 hertz as the uh, frequency observed by the uh, second eagle.